Hello. Can everybody see and hear me? Okay. Oh, no. Oh, wait, no, it's loading now. Okay, oh, good. No? Oh, wait, no, it's loading now. Oh. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to the third of my virtual studio parties. Cal is, as usual, helping out uh, with the chat and everything else. And um, I hope you're doing well. If you'd like to share in the chat how you're doing and um, and if you brought anything today that you're going to be playing with or working on. While you write that up, I'm going to mention, hi, Joanne. Nice to see you. Um, I am planning to... Hi, Peggy. Wow. Oh, Linda, <laughs> you're using your son's account. I was wondering who Nolan was. <laughs> so glad you could make it. And have you brought anything that you're going to play with? Um, today I thought I would mix th mix things up a little bit and um, work with something of a kind of really old technology kind of art, graphic art, which is a scratch board. And um, I happen to have a couple of sheets. They're a little bit dinged. You can see they've got they've they're pre-scratched. I've got pre-scratched scratch board. Um, and uh, how many people here are familiar with scratch board? Let me know if you are or are not. Um, it is a an a graphic art and uh, was used for illustrations, drawings for reproduction purposes. You know about it, do you, uh, Linda? Well, being a graphic artist uh, helps. Um, if you're used to, if, if you're old enough and you're, um, uh, we're in the graphic arts at all, uh, you, you may know about it. So, um, Scratch board is a kind of board, and you know about it too, Joanne. Great. It's a kind, I'm just going to go over it for the benefit of anyone here who doesn't, and also uh, for people who watch the replay video later. Um, it's a kind of board, it's a lightweight card, and it has a. Sorry? Okay. Yeah, sorry, I'm hold, not holding it high enough. Um, let me fix that. I'm also going to go full screen. It's a lightweight card, and uh, it's coated on one side with black that gets scratched away. So there's a, uh, uh, and it is easily scratched away. I mean, well, let's see how easily. <laughs> it's been a long time since I used it, but I did actually use it for illustration uh, back in the day, um, even when I was computerized. Um because it's, it creates beautiful effects. It's a beautiful way to draw. Um, hello, Gunta. All right. I'm gonna set this up so you can see my table. This was up on top of this, right? Down, there we go. Okay, keep it close to me. There we go. And I'll hold it up at various times, but uh, I have a couple of tools I'm going to use to scratch away, and I'm going to warm up in the margins because it's been so long since I've done this. I have a reference I'm going to work from, not to totally recreate it, but um, it's going to form the basis. Um, Probably most of you know that I, my main body of work these days is based on anatomical hearts, more uh, sometimes very loosely, 
sometimes very closely. And I found these um, fo a photo of physalis husks, and the the um, the behavior of the the veins from the from the plant are is just amazing. It actually it has that branching pattern that I've become obsessed with while working on hearts. And it really resembles street maps of neighborhoods that have windy, twisty streets. It's quite hilarious. Um, so one of these days I'll probably, uh, I've, I've worked with maps, many of you may know, and um, I may superimpose maps onto things like this. So uh, anyway, I thought I would um, base today's scratch board drawing on this, but I, I'm studying it right now. And uh, the reason it looks the way it does is I've cut out excessive amounts of black for printing purposes. So <laughs> if you're wondering why it looks so choppy, it's not actually a collage. It just, I didn't want to waste printer ink on the background. Linda says gorgeous. Yeah, it's so beautiful, isn't it? Um, so yeah, I thought that would be quite inspiring. So I'm just studying it because I want to draw based on it, but I'm also going to play with the forms a little bit. And I'm trying to get a read on what, what I would like to do. I might rearrange things somewhat. So I'm just going to use a graphite pencil to draw onto the scratch board. One of the nice things about working with this reference is that it is uh, white lines on a black ground. Can't really see this very well. Cal, would you mind moving it closer and bending it so that uh, they don't have to see my face particularly? They can. I'll move this to one side. I'm not sure the lights above it, and maybe lower that light. James says, perhaps a white pencil. And, and um, Linda says, your braid looks adorable, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Look here, let me see if I can. Easily lay your hands on. Find off. something in one of my tins here. So how's everybody doing in terms of getting supplies? Uh, getting supplies is one of the things that's been on our minds lately because we're, um, we just placed a couple of orders to have things delivered. or Well, actually, one's for pickup and one's for delivery as an alternative to actually going into the stores. Um, Okay, so first I'm going to sketch with the uh, the pencil because that is responsive, um, and then I I'm going to uh, nail down the I can I can stay in flux with the pencil. I don't have a white pencil, but I have a silver pen, so I will um, reassert the lines in the silver pen. Oh, actually, I guess I don't want to do that. Chalk. Chalk. White chalk. That would do it. I have time for it. Yeah, great. White chalk, like chalk pastel is what I'm thinking of. Uh, Conte better? No. Okay. Needs to be removable. Okay. We'll figure this out. <laughs> it's all getting made up as we go along anyway. I feel like, see, uh, this is why I need the pencil, because I feel like I'm not distorting this enough. I want to have something that's more, uh, so I've done, 
I've done lines like that, okay? And I, I haven't done all of them yet, but I'm, I'm not, I, I feel like I'm a little too close to what's actually going on in the drawing, in the photograph. So I'm going to use the pencil to push it further away and, um, and watch out for that. I've just scratched into the black. Now, one of the things that's good about scratch board is uh, when you do have stray scratches, you can just cover them up again with India ink. And in fact, um, another variation on scratch board is a white board that has a scratchable surface in that you can scratch into it, but you apply ink over it, let it dry, and then use it like this kind of scratch board. If you work with garbage, materials are found everywhere. Yes, great tools to try out in the kitchen. Yes, that's great, Linda. So I'm always scrounging for tools in what I consider the fun places. I mean, I love art supply stores, but I feel like I need to bend this thing somewhat. So I'm going to bend it, even though it doesn't bend in this way in reality. And I'm going to make it more cockeyed. So I'm going to make that go up. Okay. So now you can see my drawing there, and I'm making this go up and that bend and I like drawing in a way that's uh, it's when I just keep the tool moving responsively it's drawing is thinking Joanne said she's working with fiber plastic and paper for collage assemblage and embroidery trying to reuse as much as possible that's great yeah that's really good. Val Ashton says, if you work with garbage materials, they're found everywhere. <laughs> they certainly are. <laughs> the world is your art supply story, Val. Val, when you're doing printmaking from your, from your garbage, what do you use? Do you use acrylics or do you use printmaking ink of some kind? Uh, if you would you mind sharing in the chat what you use? Okay, I feel like I've got a good shape there. So now it's a question of establishing. Oh, okay. Val says she uses Akua inks. Yeah, Akua inks are amazing. I haven't used them very much at all, but uh, um, I'd certainly like to. Uh, but I'll use this uh, home isolation situation as, an, as a, an excuse for using up some of the thousands of art supplies I have in my house. Hence the scratch board. I've been meaning to get to this scratch board for years, so uh, this is a fantastic excuse to to get to it. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Maybe I'll just layer them. Okay, so this is sort of what I've mapped out in graphite so far. Um, now I'll take some white chalk pastel and uh, get a little more established. I think one of these just might have to be bigger than the others. That seems to be, I have a need for that. Okay. 
Even with the pastel, I have to be careful to press only lightly. Otherwise, I will dig into that ink layer. That's something I am discovering as I do. <laughs> as I draw. I feel like these husks would make fantastic cyanotypes or photograms or something. I'm going to have to look into it, see if I can grow this in the backyard. Because the alternative to garbage is art supplies is growing your own art supplies, right? As well as references. There, you can see that a lot better, can't you? That's good. So I'll make one a lot smaller. And kind of wonky. Maybe it got stunted as it was growing. Anything else I should know about in the chat? Um, Piggy says her satellite reception is horrible, but oh no! <laughs> I, but right, because you're out in the beautiful countryside, but it has its downsides, right? Has that been making it? I mean, is it sometimes really good? I hope so. During these, well. You get to spend time in the studio too, of course, which is great. But I, I was thinking uh, it's really nice to watch movies and, and things. So I hope your satellite reception is normally okay. Um, okay. You know, for better or for worse, <laughs> this is what I've got. So I'm going to start with the big one because that feels like more fun to me. But first, I'd better do a few warm-up marks in the margins here. Um, Cal has loaned me his um, scratchboard nib for a, you know, dip pen type of handle. So I'm going to try that first in the margins. Ooh, that's a beautiful thing. So... One of the things about the effect of scratch board is that it can register very fine detail. And um, some drawings, it depends on the style in which you draw, but obviously it's either white or black. So you have to use graphic approaches like hatching and cross hatching and uh, stripey effects and of course pattern and shape but it is very graphic and to get half tones to get um, values that are in between black and white you have to use black and white drawing techniques and uh, and that's part of the charm of it although I did have a, a friend who was also a client years ago who hated things that looked like woodcuts and scratch board type stuff. What a crazy person. And I just, I just couldn't imagine it. Like, what? like, okay, not it, not being your favorite is something I could understand, but hating it. I don't know. Well, maybe someone here hates it. So <laughs> in which case you're in for a bad day. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> oh dear. Jane says, speaking of garbage, took a look at four laminated placemats before I tossed them and decided to save them and, ju and now just completed all four. Two painted, two collaged. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. So I'm also going to be using my Olfa knife for this. That's what I'm used to using, actually, for this kind of thing. So I'm going to tilt this up so you can see me as well. Now that we're more high contrast...
Okay. To decide which one I'm basing it on. I probably should base it on this one, so I should make a slight adjustment to this. And have it come in here. And have it come in here. There we go. All right, for better or worse, eh? Committing to that first line is always the... It's like making that first brush, stro brush stroke on a blank canvas. And Val wonders, did you make the scratch board yourself? I did not. I purchased it, and it, because I saw it, I had the idea, oh, I'll get a couple of sheets. This is year, a few years ago. And... Um, uh, it conjured up memories of of inking some whiteboard as well from my past, but uh, no, this is this is the pre-made kind. If I'd been very clever, I might have done a, a fresh coat of India ink over top of it um, and and let that dry before doing this. But you know, it's just gonna. I'm just going to do this nicks and all. So getting that first line is kind of key for me. So I'm going to start here. Okay, I should actually bring this in closer. Hopefully you can see. There. So a little bit of the black has rolled up into, into a little pill. Now, where's my reference? The reference helps helps me with details, and it also helps me rem helps remind me the feeling I get from the source material. There, you see the little piled up stuff there. So now I'll brush it off. Once I get the main architectural lines in, I'll actually remove some of the preliminary chalk lines and so on. Oh, they get a fabulous quavery line. See, when I was younger, I was never trying to get quavery lines. So that's a fantastic revelation there. Quite. Okay, I'm going to get a baby wipe. And just wipe away some of those working lines so you can see what's happening. And so I could see what's happening. The graphite I'll have to erase, but some of it comes off. So I'm loving these quavery lines and really fine, fine lines too. Can you see that okay, Cal? On your screen, you can't yeah, see that? Yeah, no, I'm, I've got a delay, but yes. I okay, yeah. yeah. About five, five to ten seconds. Right. 
So. Bye, Peggy. So sorry that the reception was bad. But yeah, you take care and Jim and your boys too. If you just joined us recently, please say hi in the chat. I'd love to know. Uh, you know, love to know you're here. I'd love to know uh, if you're if you're from somewhere other than the Toronto area. That's that's interesting to know about too. And um, and how you're doing. Might want to mention that if they've got it full screen, they won't be able to see the chat. So. Oh yeah, those of you who have the uh, video full screen. We'll have trouble seeing the chat, potentially. So um, it depends. It may depend on your browser. For example, I have mine full screen, but I can see the chat um, because I set the browser full screen, but not YouTube full screen. There we go. Last night I was up up really late editing video and um, which is not something I'm expert at, but boy, I'm learning fast. <laughs> and uh, so I had to wind down. I always have to wind down before I can go to sleep and even though it was already super late. So I dug into season three of the good place and wow, what a great series. Um, I, I hear that they're going to do a final fourth series, which is really exciting. Anyone else here a fan of The Good Place? Gerda has joined us. Hello, Gerda. Welcome. So glad you could make it. And for anyone who has joined just recently, I'll fill you in on the fact that I'm working with something called scratch board, alternatively scraper board. And um, it's a, an old technology for making drawings suitable for reproduction um, at a time when it was expensive for example, in the 19th century, to print half tones. Half tones are any of the grays in between white and black. And, uh, and half tones are specifically graphic ways of conveying those middle, those mid tones. And uh, uh, so if you look closely at a newspaper photograph, you'll see the half tone dots. That's what it is. So uh, when that was expensive, uh, even in an analog world, uh, they would get artists to do a lot of illustrations this way, among other ways. But the reproduction from these was fantastic. Lisa Irvine has joined us. Hi, Lisa. I'm glad you could make it. Whenever you were able to make it is a good time to make it. Do let us know if you brought anything that you're going to be playing with or working on or whatever, or if you're just hanging out, which is totally fine too. So I'm getting the architecture of this physalis in place. That's the I'm drawing based on a on a reference of a, a photo reference of the husks of a physalis plant, and um, which has exciting forms. Right. Wipe away some of those lines now. 
and I'll show you what it looks like from closer up. Isn't that just lovely, the way the white on black crackles like that? Something deeply satisfying about the high contrast. What does Jane Laster Gordon Jane have to say? Jane says you got a scratch board with color under, colors under. Yes, yes, that's a, a newer innovation. I noticed that they had produced a lot of products for kids with that. And then maybe the adults decided that it shouldn't just be for kids. <laughs> but yeah, that's a... Now that scratch board's not needed for what it was originally used for, they can do all kinds of things, whatever they can dream up. Lisa says she's working with some on some sketches today for my Mylar, going to be experimenting with square compositions. And she also says she loves scratch board. Yeah. Oh, well, good. I'm glad you're, you've got some, a project. Congratulations on your new website, Lisa. If you want to put your the URL for your new website in the chat, please feel free. And then anyone who would care to care to check it out can do so. All right, I'm going to do my first little branches and I'm going to taper with the knife so that I can switch to this nib and we'll see how it feels. I'm so used to working with Olfa knives. We'll see if I actually adjust to the nib but it's definitely worth trying. Oh, so exquisitely fine. Look at that. You see how fine that line is? It's just amazing. So yeah, really good for the fine veins. For every, anyone who's joined us a little late, this is the reference I'm working from uh, loosely. I'm, it's my inspiration. I'm basing it on the general structures and, and vein patterns, but um, making my way with them as, as, as per usual, I think. <laughs> uh, Cal says, can't believe you've always done it with knives, Kim. You heathen. <laughs> really? Well, I didn't know that there was a tool, I think. It's possible that in high school we had a tool, but but once I left high school, I had no such tool. When you went to that fancy special high school for art, so you probably learned all about that stuff in more detail. We had one art teacher for the whole school because it was a small school. I think we had 700 and something students for grade seven through 13, but, but we did it in one year less. So effectively grade seven through 12 in terms of numbers. Wow, so fine. It's almost too fine sometimes. I think I'll switch to the knife for this part. So does anyone have anything they want to recommend for watching? I'm always interested in, uh, and I'm sure other people would be too, in any... Uh, Shows or movies, documentaries. Or uh, 
not just for watching, but for listening. Like, do you have a favorite podcast or SoundCloud that you like to listen to? I'm listening to uh, an audio book these days by Brene Brown called The Power of Vulnerability. You know, my artwork is um, has been for years about ever since the boxed in series which is that was that had a sh an exhibition back in 2010 so that tells you i've been working out for quite a long time uh on vulnerability and empathy and uh these times that we're going through right now sure are ripe for those kinds of themes Wow, you know, even with this knife, I can get very delicate. So, looking down at the tip of this, it's a bit blurry, isn't it? Is it still blurry? That's reasonably good. Yeah. Kind of show that really fine detail down there. Oh, there, that, that lighting's better, probably. So that I'm doing with my Ulfa knife, so. But, you know, I've been working with Ulfa knives since I was 18 or 19 years old. So um, ever since I started first working in the graphic arts industry, my very first job in the industry while I was in university was stripping film for a printer the old days when film had to be stripped because they didn't just print it out it was shot in a camera and had to be stripped into flats and then the plates were exposed from that <laughs> Sorry, I didn't warn you this would be memory lane, did I? <laughs> it's, it's working with the scratch board that's doing it, I think. I said, wow, even a chisel, she could make it work. And, and Linda says, Kim could work wonders with a butcher knife. <laughs> Let me add it. Let me add it. Gunta <laughs> says she's been watching the Old Monk series on Amazon. Oh, right, right. The, the detective. And she says, the camera work is great. Very clear. Mm. Jessica says, I love podcasts. My favorite murder, spirits podcast, planet money, Potterless, Canada land. And that's why we drink are some of my favorites. <laughs> that's why we drink. <laughs> oh, yeah. Canada land is, a, is a, a great place to get real journalism going on a journalism uninfluenced by corporate interests uh which you know these days is valuable not saying there aren't other good journalists out there but yeah that's a really good one thanks for listing those podcasts jessica it's good to know i like listening to things it's the kind of thing you can do you know while you're cooking or or, or while you're doing laundry or making things and and I like that it doesn't take you can constant you can focus on what's being said without it taking all of your attention away it is so fascinating what goes on in these veins I'm just going to show <laughs> it to you again because I'm so Jess says I've got you up in the living room the whole family's watching <laughs> oh no you're <laughs> kidding me <laughs> And that's a big screen TV. <laughs> oh, well, hi guys. <laughs> yes. So that would be a, a part of the co clan for those of you, uh, the rest of you uh, here at the at the party. 
Pam says, also Truth Dig and TRN are excellent. Oh, great. And those are podcasts, are they, Pam? I'm I'm basing these vein structures loosely on what I see. This is very much uh, uh, laying in the structures and then improvising within them, which is really fun. Sandy Wong says, hey, Kim, <clears throat> I miss what Scratchboard is made and covered with. Yes. Well, hi, Sandy. So glad you could make it. So Scratchboard is um, a kind of lightweight card. That is, you see, it's white on the back. So the card starts out white, but then they coat it uh, traditionally with India ink. And... Um, and then you scratch it off. This is a proper scratch board nib. There, yeah, you can see it in you know in a in a dip pen handle. Um, but I, <laughs> Cal thinks I'm a heathen for doing this, but I uh, am very comfortable using an Olfa knife for this work, and I find it's expressive. Uh, the nib. Well, I suppose I could try. I wonder what you can do. On the side, yeah. Can you? I think so. Okay. Cal says, always retract your Olfa knife for safety. Um, yeah. Ooh, look at that. Ooh. I must say, that's quite exciting. I'll show you a close-up of this. There's just something delicious about that. Sorry. Um, I hope you can see that. I can't tell if it's blurry or not. Depends on the focal length of the lens, right? Anyway, um, also really exciting. What I'm doing right now, though, is more of a fa Fantasia of fine. But it's like the, the tip of the Olfa knife gives me a little, a small broad blade that allows for variegation within a narrow range. And I like that about it. And Bell gives you a big thumbs up and Sandy Wong says, lovely. Oh, thanks. Christine Ling recommends the English game, which is about the origins of modern fo football, in other words, soccer. Ah, right. That's cool. And the origins of the fanaticism, too, or uh, <laughs> the tribal loyalty. That's true of all forms of football and hockey and everything else, though. Hmm. This is going to be fun. Pam says, the power of contrast. Oh, there's nothing like it, you know. I mean, I enjoy a good, a good vibrating effect from color and so on, but there's something deeply, deeply satisfying about black and white line and pattern. Val asks, do you have to be careful not to cut too deep into the board? Yes. Yeah, I remember when I when I was new at it, I used to uh, <laughs> routinely, I'm, I'm a hard presser, you know, uh, people are naturally either hard pressers or light pressers, and I'm naturally a hard presser. Um, and uh, I would routinely cut through. Now, you can repair it from the back, you know, 
uh, apply a layer of cloth tape or something or, or glue some paper to the back but um, with acrylic medium or something but uh, it's best not just not to cut through so that's why it's good to do um, you know if you're not used to doing this what I would suggest is you have a sacrificial sheet as your warm-up sheet and you practice making different kinds of marks in it um, you know until the sheet ends up co literally covered in marks uh, it could could be quite interesting actually I just have the two sheets so I limited myself to those few marks just to get a basic feel for it because I do have experience in my distant past and muscle memory is an incredible thing. So um, pay attention to the tactile response you get from, oh, that's better. I just lifted my glasses up and I can see it better because <laughs> I'm nearsighted. Um, pay attention to the tactile response, uh, you know, or your tactile feedback. Um, when you feel yourself break through that black layer, you, that's enough. That's all you need. I'm not cranking it through, you know. Uh, so a couple of things. Jane says, working on my colored scratch board too, a gorilla face. Was using the other carving tools, but like the like using the exacto or Olfa knife. Is that what you're calling it? Yeah, this is made by Olfa, and this is an Olfa style knife. So Exacto is known for its single blade, very distinctive shape, um, knurled, knurled barrel to change the blades and a barrel handle. Whereas Olfa is known for these snap off blades. This is completely, it, it, it looks like it's just a small version of the big kind that you see everywhere at hardware stores and so on. It's actually quite different. This is a precision blade. Never do this with one of the big blade versions of this that will have a, a big knob on it for changing the blade uh, because this is actually a precision blade. And one of the things that's nice about it, of course, you can work with just one blade out, but certain applications I use it for, for uh, flush trimming, for example, I'll use it with several blades out and I can use the flex without um, without pushing it to breaking point so um, but those are those are skills you, ha you you have to practice to get for sure but I'm always teaching uh, regularly teaching students about the the flush mounting method using Olfa type knives couple of questions for you. Yeah. Sandy Wong asks, can you do repairs to wrong lines with more India ink? I always appreciate an exit strategy. Yes, you can. Isn't that nice? And, you know, here's the thing. Because it was developed for illustration purposes, so therefore drawing intended for reproduction. So the art value is the same. It's not illustration as opposed to good art. Um, it's just illustration intended for reproduction. Uh, they need, they needed to be able to correct things too. They might, for example, even get something wrong in an illustration and have to, you know, in something that's supposed to convey something factual or likeness or whatever. So really important to have some correction method. Okay, I'm starting to build up the little mesh. And I think when I get more of an area of it, that it's going to be quite satisfying. Val asks, what other tools could you use? And Linda McIntosh says, old dental tools? Yeah. I mean, I haven't done it, but I would uh, wager that you could. I think that would be fine you know, depending on the dental tool. So I would, again, you have that sacrificial board that you try things out on, and that would be a great way to test out uh, alternative tools and see what you can get out of them, right? So, you know, I mentioned 
you, you may have missed it depending on when you were here. Uh, I discovered how great a quavery line I could get on this and variegated line I could get on this. And the reason that was a revelation to me is because I had never been trying to do that before when I had used Scratchboard. Um, I, I, I'd done other approaches, cleaner approaches, and also more engraving woodcutty approaches. So, um, yeah, but I, it's not, I really love a good uh, variegated quavery line because uh, it just it just sings to me, says so much, feels so personal. Sandy asks. Are there color variations in India ink? Does it matter which you use if your piece is the final and not for reproduction? I just mentioned that you'd see the difference in sheen on the original, but not the reproduction. Right, that's a good point. Um, I have not tried it with other kinds of ink. Um, India ink, so far as I know, only comes in black. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, traditional India ink only comes in black because it is traditionally, by definition, carbon plus shellac. So pure carbon plus shellac. Um, Chinese and Japanese traditional inks are very similar to that in composition. So you could use one of them probably. Um, but in terms of colored ink, I've never tried uh, another kind of ink. But that would be a fun thing to try. Definitely. You, uh, anyone who knows me knows I'm always up for an experiment, right? So I love your thinking. I, I think that's... Experimental is what keeps things fresh and new and exciting for me. Jess says, one of my design teachers swore by a scalpel and sent us to a medical, to a medical <laughs> supply store to get them, and I replied that I love them. Cal, when I met Cal a uh, long time, thir over 30 years ago, um, I was amazed because he was using a medical-type scalpel and, um, and loved it, you know, because he was used to it, right? But uh, it's not responsive and versatile in the same way that the Ulfa knife is. It doesn't have length variation. Um, it's pointier. Uh, I get this slight bevel. I don't mean in this direction on the cutting edge, but at the end where the where the ground edge is, and um, that's amazing. I, I seem to recall the X-Acto knives being more rigid than the Olfa knife. And um, I would assume that scalpels are too, but I don't know that. They have a little flex. To them, but... Tiny bit of flex, right. So they might be better. Yeah. I've never liked X-Acto knives. Obviously, they millions, millions upon millions of people have disagreed with me, but... I've always found these more versatile, practical. It's really funny when you're working on details this small, making them up and kind of sweating about whether and realizing as you as you think that thought that in the end there's going to be a mass of these little details and that the mass is what's going to count for more than the specifics of any one detail. It's a good thing to remember. Looking back at the at the reference from time to time to locate a basis for starting a new set of paths here. It's really incredible how fine a line I can get from this knife. 
you know, when I when I used the 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 proper scratch board nib that Cal so nicely supplied me with, I thought, oh, that'll be great for fine. But I'm I'm so comfortable with this tool. I just I just give you these periodic updates. There, maybe you can see that. Hopefully. Um, so one thing I'm noticing online a lot, uh, I don't know if you are, uh, people cope, cope passing time and getting creative and whatever online is a ton of cooking and baking. And uh, some say they're eating a lot more too. <laughs> I'm, I'm very glad to say I'm not eating any more than I normally do. So that's a good thing in my case. But um, is anyone here doing more cooking, more baking? Maybe in part because some of you have more family at home now. I keep trying to get to some cooking, but I've been quite busy organizing new online things, including this these virtual studio parties. Linda says exquisite. Hmm. Just says Thank my you. teacher saw my Olfen my in packaging class and was horrified. Oh my god. <laughs> Send them to me. <laughs> Lisa says everybody is baking. Jess says I'm doing more baking, but with less people to eat it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh dear. Well, I hope you've got a good freezer because you can always freeze some of it for a rainy day. <laughs> Linda says she's cooking up a storm. Boys are now in charge of cooking one night a week. Oh, that's good. Life skills, right? Val says daughter has decided because we're stuck at home, she has an excuse to bake almost every day. <laughs> <laughs> so you're eating well, in other words. Possibly more well than you wish. Uh, I don't think we've baked anything yet. But don't worry, it'll happen. It's just, you know, what is this, week two? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we just had other things we had to contend with first. For example, Cal has to go to my mother's place and and uh, repair her kitchen faucet for her. Oh, it struck, it struck a vein with this. Oh, yeah, with the cooking and baking? Yeah. Uh, Joanne says she's been making sourdough starter at the beginning of the month, mm. so making sourdough bread once a week. Val says cookies, muffins, and brownies. Jane says making more soups, throwing anything in it. Nice. Even her husband is cooking. Awesome. More than in his allotted one night a week. <laughs> Isn't that great? He's feeling inspired to by the circumstances. That's lovely. Yeah, we have a freezer full of chicken bones that I have been meaning to uh, make bone broth out of for a while. So that's definitely happening this weekend. And then we'll suddenly have a ton of space in our freezer, which will be very handy. It's one of the things we most like to have in our freezer, a staple of ours, is frozen spinach, and we can't seem to find any of our frozen spinach anywhere. Over repeated weeks. And this was before, uh, you know, before everyone was to. I'm also tempted to bake some brownies this weekend. Because, you know, morale. I wish I could eat some of the things you'd baked, Jess. Then I wouldn't have to go to the trouble. <laughs> oh, well. It's a bit... I'm, I'm realizing the ones I'm doing right now are a bit like the way the brain folds. You know how fascinating the, the brain looks? I mean, it's not a really fascinating color, that grayish color, but the <laughs> folding pattern is great. 
Pam says she keeps making guacamole for these parties. I don't, I don't know who's supposed to bring the Tostitos, but I haven't seen one. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. You know, I went through quite a, a phase of making homemade tortillas by hand and uh, decided that I really needed a tortilla press if I was going to keep keep doing it as regularly uh, because it it is laborious over time. But um, they were fabulous. In fact, the problem was they were so good that... I ate them up too quickly, and so I had to make them too frequently, and hence the problem. So, Linda says she's been picking up groceries for her elderly neighbor, and who's paying her back with delicious baked goods. Ah, uh, isn't that wonderful? Good for you. Jessica says brain folds, salty and jeery, are really interesting to look at. I agree. I guess they're technical names are oh names. are those the technical names jessica i didn't know that <sighs> fascinating yes she says yeah yeah they are endlessly fascinating <laughs> for the same reason that i love veins i mean it's a it's a fret nature has a certain organizes things in certain ways and you see it repeated over and over again um, with various fractal behaviors like river systems, veins, tree branches, roots. Uh. <laughs> Jane says, you have no idea how many directions the hair goes on a gorilla face until you try it on Scratchboard. <laughs> oh, wow. That's fun. Just that fact alone, I love that. Thanks, Jane. I like thinking about that. You took you took on quite a challenge, I think, with that, didn't you? Also, they're so expressive looking, aren't they? Wonderful structures to their faces. When I was tr trying to think what I was going to do today on the scratch board, Cal was saying, do a face. And I said, no, I'm talking to people and using scratch board for the first time in I don't know how many years, many <laughs> decades. And uh, I don't need 12 layers of difficulty for this, for, for the studio party. I think this mesh is starting to develop. I'll get this little segment filled and I'll share it to see you can see how it's building up. It's quite fun. There. It's starting to feel a little like a husk feels. You seeing it now? It's just coming up now. Oh yeah, that's great. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, so I'll pull it back. You can see that it's starting to create the feeling of it in that area. Let's get some more of it done. Clearly I've I've um opted for a Jane says looks amazing and Jess says, ooh, that close up though. <laughs> yeah well i i have i get to enjoy the close-up while working on it so that's why i definitely wanted to make sure to share it with you because there is so much going on It's nice because last last party I was doing tests to try some things out, and that's valuable and interesting and instructive for for me. Um, but it's also fun doing something that 
at the end of the day is going to be a satisfying artwork. Jane says, will you print from this afterwards, perhaps? Um, what I may do is scan it in. You know, I love doing uh, hybrids of traditional with digital. And uh, I love that there's so much hand labor in this. And then if I bring it, that element into something digital, that could really have a nice effect on the digital. So that's what I'm thinking because that's what I normally think of, but. Maybe an element coming into digital, to digital section. Yeah, well that. Oh, is that what you said? That's what I said, okay, yeah. sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right, you're, you're doing chat and everything, so. Yeah. Yeah, I do these uh, webinars on uh, Tradigital Art Studio, it's called. And uh, we have spent most of our time in Photoshop recently. But it's so fascinating to see what happens when you bring surprising things together. Someone wants to see what I can do with that? Is that is that the idea? Linda says, love the variety of lines what you're getting. Imagine what you, you'll get when you pull out the butcher knife. Uh, so Cal's got me a butcher knife. Jane says, sounds neat. I'm about as digital as connecting to this virtual art party. Linda well, says, that's, that's great. I, I think it's fantastic that you're managing to, to do this. As you said, it was your first time doing a live stream, right? The last time. So, so welcome to this brave new world, Jane, because Jessica is a native of this world. It's, it's great to, um, especially in the current circumstances, To be able to take advantage of more things digitally and that's why i that's why i made this live stream youtube so that even people who are technologically unconfident or lower skilled would be able to access it all right i'm not going to do it on that baby there i don't know if this is sharp enough but just for linda just for linda I'm going to try this over on one, one corner. All right. Oh, yeah. No problem. It's a different... <laughs> Just says, getting creative with our tools and the emoji of a sword. <laughs> exactly. Linda says, you go, girl. This This feels like it's going to be more of a garlic than a... Chrysalis. <laughs> Suda. So oh, thank you for, thank you. Very interesting. Hi, Sudashri. So nice that you're here. Fantastic. Uh, I, I was challenged. I don't know when you arrived, so I'll just mention that I was challenged by Linda, a.k.a. Nolan, in the chat uh, to use a butcher knife. So Cal dutifully went to the kitchen and found me a knife so that I can show off my knife skills. And I am enjoying the, the character of the line that I'm getting. I'm, I'm playing it up. I'm not trying to make a smooth controlled line because I think one of its strengths is the fact that I can get these interesting <laughs> lines.
Linda says, okay, now let's try the garden shears. And I said, watch it, watch it, Linda. <laughs> She's going to want me to use the hedge trimmer. <laughs> yeah. No, that gets awkward in the space. So, where's my... I'll show you what the result is so far. I'll wipe off the chalk marks and so on. That's a nice start, don't you think? And actually, I think what I could do is do uh, kind of the main architecture this way on that one and then come in with some finer lines. Suda says, what material is this? Sorry, I just joined in. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Suda. Uh, thank you for speaking up because I don't know when everyone's joining in. Um, I'm working with something called Scratchboard. Now, this might have come up at school when we were at school together, Suda, um, with Dawn. And uh, so you might actually have done a project using this. So scratch board. There, got some additional line. Scratch board is a lightweight card. It's just white and then it's been coated with black, traditionally with India ink on the, the other side. And you scratch away the ink layer and slightly into the car into the card itself too. So I don't know what what's special about the white card, but I can when I look at the uh, li lines I've incised into the card, I can see that there's a little bit of I can see evidence of my knife in the white as well as in the black. So I, I think it's possible that it could be a, a coating on the white that I'm also um, below the black that I'm also scratching through. It's a very old, it's an old technology, Suda, for um, uh, making drawings for reproduction back in back in the, the days, like in the 19th century and early 20th century, when it was expensive to create halftone images. Halftone images are uh, the ones converted to dots or lines that you would see in a newspaper uh, to create the, the grays in between black and white. And um, you can see from from what's gone on here, that it registers tremendous detail. And, um, and you can get an overall effect that feels somewhere in between white and black. I'm not trying to do that now. Uh, Suda, you will also have missed, and maybe someone else here will have missed that I'm working from a, a photo reference for inspiration uh, but definitely not rendering it um, of a plant, the husks of a plant called a physalis. Now, to me, they look a lot like uh, the Chinese lantern plant. So, if they're not that, they certainly look related to to one. I've always wanted to grow Chinese lantern plant, and then someone told me that it's incredibly invasive. But I think they're so beautiful. The color's beautiful, the shape's beautiful. So I've switched from the butcher knife, as you can see, um, and used my my tool of choice, which is this Olfa knife. Is anyone watching food videos? I've noticed, even though I'm not baking or cooking, I'm watching people bake and cook thinking, yeah, I'll do that. I'm going to do that. And then I don't do it, but it's really fun watching. <laughs> Val says, someone mentioned earlier printing from the scratch board. Would that work? I don't think so, would it? Well, let's ask, I think it was Jane that was asking that. Was she think, like when, when she said that, I was thinking of um, exposing us, 
a photo exposing a silk screen or something like that, but not not actually printing from this because it's. Um, I don't think the relief is sufficient. Is yeah, it? it's not. It's very very well, tiny relief. As you think about the layer of a dry, <clears throat> the thickness of a layer of dried ink, it's not. Um, it's not very pronounced. Now, of course, the, the surfaces are different, where the whites are and where the blacks are, but I think the fine details would clog up. So it would have to be a photo, photo exposure to light sensitive media. Now here's something. I could do. I could digitize it, scan it in, print it on a transparency, and then create a cyanotype exposing through the tra transparency. Mm -hmm. cool. Suda thought you were working on lino. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like super easy to scratch lino. <laughs> I don't have to dig. <laughs> yeah. So uh, one of the things I was saying, Suda, is that uh, you know I really love combining digital with analog media approaches, and uh, so something I will definitely do with this is scan it in, and then combine and layer it and transform it in digitally with other other material. And who knows what that might be at this point. That will in part depend on what what this looks like when it's done. But I for example, one of the things I can do is I can I can scan it super high resolution and then I could do a close-up on all these veins and they'll look much rougher when when I enlarge them, but they'll still have that uh, lattice feeling. Almost lacy feeling. Yeah, it's almost like drawing lace, uh, which is something I have done a little bit of and really enjoy. It's it's curious that um, I didn't used to think of myself as a patient person at all, and uh, I have discovered my patience over the years working on art projects. Some things I can have tremendous patience for. Something that the the level of detail of this is reminding me of. Um, uh, how many people here have been to Asia? Some part of Asia. It could be South Asia, East Asia, Southeast Asia. Uh, one of the things I love about traveling, you know, I've had limited travels in Asia, Hong Kong, Malaysia, Macau, that kind of thing, uh, is the level of surface ornamentation is just extraordinary. And sometimes for things that are ephemeral, you know, for example, for we saw giant joss sticks, which are the big incense sticks uh, for the temple, and uh, that people were carrying to the temple, and they were carved like marble columns might be, with dragons and fire and cloud and all kinds of things, and it's just extraordinary. And then you just knew it was going to be, well, I guess it wasn't carved, it was molded, but still, it just seemed incredible. Of course, lots of things are carved. Even the ridge lines of the roofs are covered in ceramics with figures and buildings and creatures, and just extraordinary. So, uh, and fretwork, you know, fretwork windows, so in hot, especially in the hot, places in uh, in Asia that they'll use those to allow the air through but give a privacy screen 
And of course, fantastic designs are made of them. So, and I know India has an incredible tradition of ornament and in Indonesia where my family's, half of my family's from. I mean, obviously old things in Europe have a lot more ornamentation, but I just find it's Judith, she's from India. Yes, <sighs> exactly. Well, and don't you think that there's some the com the tradition of ornament there is just amazing, right? The complexity and the detail of it, amazing. I know some artists in Canada who are from Pakistan. And uh, one of them in particular is a miniature painter. So she's like insane what she can paint <laughs> at what level of detail. So she'd look at this and laugh, I'm sure. Uh, but, uh, well, no, she's much too nice to laugh. But, you know, <laughs> you know what, what she will do at a miniature scale is kind of mind-blowing. So one of the food videos I watched that I'm definitely going to make is uh, Jamie Oliver had a, a video for a really good basic salad dressing that just sounded fabulous. And um, just out of fatigue, we've normally been buying our I'm not proud of it, but we've been buying our salad dressing, and uh, uh, I'm going to hopefully cure myself of that by making Jamie Oliver's. Susan says, very fine and intricate work. Mm -hmm. And because you were late to late to, to the party, Suda, I should ask you, how are you doing okay? Is your family doing okay? Everyone's safe and at home and whatever, or safe wherever they are? Yeah. yeah. I was having a conversation with our old schoolmate, Jackie Nimney, and uh, she'd been going through a tough time. Uh, for everyone else here, uh, our old school friend Jackie is a doctor, and uh, fate, she was in quarantine from traveling, I think it was, and so she's, when she's back at work, she's going to be at a COVID-19 clinic, um, and she was feeling a lot of anxiety around that, and I don't blame her. So we were having a nice exchange about that. She said that she has overcome the anxiety in part, at least enough to face it, um, because of the outpouring of love from everybody for all the healthcare workers like her, doctors, nurses, it's, and everyone else in the healthcare field. Yeah, that's why it's good to have things like this to... Um, Suda says they're all fine. Good. Thanks for asking, just home from the last three weeks following instructions. Right, right. Were you traveling somewhere interesting, Suda? I, I'm, I'm trying to recall now. I, I think I must have seen a photo or two but it's always <laughs> seems like forever since I last traveled out of the house even so awfully nice to hear if you were somewhere nice.
Yeah, I've actually uh, only left the house for um, some walks in the park, keeping safe physical distance. Um, gosh, for two weeks, right? Yeah, it's been two weeks since I went anywhere. Cal very nicely has done what a few grocery shopping trips and so on. Sweetie says, well, I'm not allowed to, only going out for groceries. Yeah. Exactly. Well, here in Brampton, we can go for a walk in the park as long as we maintain the right social, the right physical distance. I noticed the other day, though, when it was so beautiful and warm and sunny, that it was, uh, you had to work harder to maintain the physical distance. And I, I just thank my lucky stars that I don't live in downtown Toronto right now because the density kind of precludes being able to keep any safe distance. Cal is reminding me that he's made me a nice hot cocoa that I've had not a sip of. <laughs> oh, so. There, it's, it's coming along, isn't it? I'm getting kind of excited seeing that. That yeah. looks great, yeah. Yeah, so here, I'm going to take a little break from, from that work. I'll put my glasses back on so I can see all of you. <laughs> there we go. And and that's drink. very nice. Yeah. Well, Pam, I know you like to do an intricate drawing. I've seen you do some. Hmm. That's nice. Not hot anymore, but cocoa is a lovely thing. You know? Linda says, wow, lovely work, Kimmy. <laughs> Thanks, Linda. <laughs> she says, you deserve a break. Yeah, I need a little break in the concentration and everything. We're coming up to 3.30. So Are we? You can oh. Say whether you want to, how much longer you think. Well, let's, let's uh, sit here for a few minutes. Uh, Christine Ling says, we're in Etobicoke and people are moving to the side as they pass, maintaining the physical distancing. That's awesome. Oh, and Suda said, Hannah Designs. Yes. Nice. Oh, Hannah Designs. They're amazing. Did you, Suda, did you get Hannah done for your wedding? Because if you did, I, I applaud you. I mean, you know, it's up to you entirely, but I'm also kind of envious. <laughs> that would, that, I just think that that's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, um, yes, we all have to. <laughs> right. So is it, is it considered part of the, um, not like maybe even slightly beyond a tradition, but, but sort of part of the ritual to, to have that done. Cause I think it, it's just so fascinating. And I, I know I've seen um, someone I know was part of a wedding party. She wasn't Indian at all. She was a, a white person, Western European extraction. And, uh, but she was part of a wedding party. And so she got to have the henna done and just, yeah, kind of envious of her too. <laughs> Jane says, I'm near High Park. And while I can. Well, it can be busy. Oh, yes. 
Sorry, I'm having a little trouble focusing my eyes, Everyone I think, folks, because of the close work. Yeah, all well, that's good. Yeah, someone else I know said it was really busy in High Park, which, as the weather gets better and better, I'm sure <laughs> it's more and more true. Suda says, it's just a ritual, and before the wedding, we have a henna party where all the guests attending get the henna done. Oh, wow. Fantastic. What a great tradition. And the henna artists themselves, like, I just think it's like a... a, a, a disciplined, skillful doodle. And I can think of worse ways to, to spend my time or make a living than that. Ah. Oh. Well, how about I finish this little section that I have here? I have a little gap here. We've we've slightly passed the time that this party is supposed to end, but uh, I always like the satisfaction of completing completing a stage or something. So my plan it, uh, for next week is to actually take the week off from work. Um, uh, that'll be interesting. I'm not very good at that anymore. There was a time in my life when I was really good at that. And I seem to have lost the knack. So um, we'll see how that turns out. I asked Sue to how many artists would be working. She says there's, there's a special henna artist just for the bride and another one for the guests. Right. Yeah, I mean, the bride has to get the best and probably the most intricate. Oh, my glasses keep falling off my head. Honestly, that's better. By the way, the uh, for anyone who might be interested, uh, there are a few other online things that Cal and I are going to be doing. Cal, when do you have your collage jam coming up? It starts Monday at 2 to 3.30, same time slot. Okay, so Monday at 2 to 3.30, Cal's going to do a collage jam. Anyone's welcome at any level to have some fun collaging along with him. Um, you know, it's not a class. It's just like this. Um, and, of course, you could also sit and watch whatever, whatever you like. Um, and it's free like this but it's gonna be on the Zoom platform, am I right? So um, you need to get in touch and share, give, give us your email and let us know that you wanna uh, be part of it so that we can email you the link to the Zoom app and to the meeting itself. They, they refer to them as meetings, um, but that's the collage jam on Monday afternoon. And uh, On April 9th is when yeah, we're both. Let me get my calendar up. Yeah. Thursday, April 9th, we're yeah. both starting uh, online, courses. Uh, online courses. Cal on Thursday morning what? is doing a collage course. So that will have actual content and, and instruction. And uh, in the afternoon on Thursdays, I will be doing what I'm calling Jelly Jam. So uh, playing with the jelly plates, but with 
specific intentions, uh, things to try, techniques and approaches to work with, possibly combining it with other, with other things. Gel plate printing, it's commonly called jelly plate, but that's related to the fact that um, one of the brands is called Jelly Arts. Gel plate printing is really a fun, fast, <laughs> uh, inventive way to work with color and layers and pattern and shape, and also to make rich textural effects, visual texture effects. Um, so anyway, um, I'll be offering that for four weeks if you want to join me Thursday afternoons. Even if you can't actually attend Thursday afternoons, if any of you have have things that actually you're doing um, essential services type work or whatever, um, there, are, there will be replay videos available um, as part of the class. So that's, that's one advantage that this uh, teaching on the Zoom platform has over in-person classes, which is you get to see those demos again. You get to hear those uh, descriptions or instructions again. And, and on that platform, we'll be able to share our work as well, which is nice. So it won't just be chat like this. You'll be able to see and talk and all of those things. So Cal and I are trying to roll out more online things since everybody's stuck at home. Uh, it's good to have things to try. I've got a whole bunch of online courses I've purchased over time and um, I'm planning to get caught up on some of those myself. Suda says she loves collage. Oh really? And, awesome. Uh, so I've given her the beats. That's great. And, and Valerie asked, is the course info on your website? And I've said by Monday. For yeah, by Monday it will be. Um, it, we're, we're sort of uh, Running as fast as we yeah, can. Yeah, we're running as fast as we can with the circumstances changing. Can you see that okay? Is that? Yeah. I don't have my glasses on, so it's hard to tell if it's blurry or not because I'm blurry. It's fun, eh? This is really neat because I, you know, I haven't done something so minutely detailed in this, um, if you'll pardon the pun, in this vein. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this looks great. Um, and so, you know, I always like to take on something that I can learn from or that relates to something, to what I'm interested in and so on. So, yeah. Kim says. Oh, that's nice. Kim says, really amazing, Kim. Oh, thank you. So, um, yeah, maybe I'll make a little bit of progress on it before the next studio party, which will be the same time, same, uh, you know, same YouTube channel, but a different link. I've already set it up. So if you visit my YouTube channel, just by clicking on my name in the description below the, the actual video feed you're looking at, that will take you to the channel and you'll see upcoming event. Set a reminder if you want, or you can click on it and then bookmark it, whatever.